guys, how's it going? Tez back again with episode number 10 of the Chelsea career mode here on Xbox One. We're into double figures and it's time to take on West Ham. Now, obviously, this game in real life was a bit one-sided. Chelsea running out 3-0 winners. We were hoping for something similar in this game today. Now, obviously, we're not doing too well in the Premier League. As you can see, we're sat 7th with a game in hand on a few teams above us. But we do need that game in hand to try and boost our points total to get back in contention for those European spots. So we were hoping to get a good result away at, uh, at Upton Park today and Torres went so close early on with that lovely overhead kick so so close to going into that far top corner and if it had I probably would have just wet myself with uh, with the excitement you see from the replay keeper would have stood no chance you see Escalana nowhere near and it just goes an inch wide of that far post really disappointing but still plenty of time left in the game to try and pick ourselves up uh, a goal or two and unfortunately for them they came close there although it was a poor shot from Jarvis in the end JT missing the header but unfortunately for the West Ham lad, he, uh, he poked that one far uh, wide of the far post. But Oscar's going to get involved up the other end now, try showing good strength actually to hold off the uh, hold off the defender. And this was actually one of the nicest moves we were able to put together all game. Really quick flowing passing, Torres getting the extra move with his feet around the defender to power the ball into the back of the net. He's banging goals in right now, Fernando Torres. Obviously scored in the uh, in the previous episode against Zenit St. Petersburg. A couple of really nice goals in that one. And he's following up with some good form here at Upton Park. Really, really nice finish. You can see again from the replay, there's plenty to aim at to the uh, Yusuke Skolani's left-hand side and he finds that bottom corner with uh, with great technique. And that is how we went in at half-time. 1-0 up, confident as we were heading into the second half that we were going to be able to continue that run of form or that vein of form in this game. And uh, Ramirez is going to be involved literally straight away after half-time. Oscar with a great turn, again showing good strength, which is something he hasn't done for me so far this season. So maybe that's a sign of him progressing as a player, kind of building himself up physically to be able to, uh, to deal with the rigours of the Premier League holds off the defender well really nice uh, touch and turn actually you'll be able to see from the replay just to guide it around the defender drop the shoulder send him the wrong way then pop the ball into the top corner Yusuke Uskalainen absolutely helpless we were going to actually pick up a penalty here late on in the second half Willian's going to try and have a shot there hits their, uh, hits their guy in the head Torres goes up wins the header it's a tame shot but the referee gives a penalty and you'll be able to see from the replay this is actually the first instance of this happening so far this year we did have a lot of uh, a lot of instances of that in the Tottenham career mode and on uh, FIFA 13 last year at Borussia Dortmund but the referee actually gave a penalty for handball there that's the first handball penalty decision we've seen so far this year on FIFA 14 next gen Torres puts the penalty away really really nicely it's just a, a simple finish and uh, you just go alone that actually ends up conceding three like he did in real life and we take three points and a three goal win so I was very very pleased with that away from home convincing display and then we come into the next game which is of course a game against Newcastle which in real life Chelsea lost 2-0 in fact and uh, how good does St James's Park look by the way or sorry the Sports Direct Arena or whatever it's called now with that new uh, that new promotion deal that uh, Mike Ashley signed but anyway we still sat 7th regardless of picking up the win against West Ham although we're a lot closer to the teams above us now which is uh, exactly what we needed from that game but uh, they're going to be on the attack early on and Azpilicueta is actually going to miss the tackle there but you'll see from the replay he missed the initial tackle but didn't take uh, Remy down and then it was once Remy crossed the ball just the the physics engine action of him crossing the ball was actually what made him fall over. So he missed the tackle, but not near him. Then as Remy crosses the ball, that's when he makes contact. I don't know whether that's, strictly speaking, a penalty or not, because the tackle had already been made, and it was post-tackle that the the, uh, the contact was made for Remy to go down. So uh, I don't really know whether that's a penalty or not. But ben Arthur's going to step up confidently with a cheeky little shimmy and then uh, bury the ball in the bottom right hand corner and Petacek can't get anywhere near it goes the wrong way in fact and we go 1-0 down now I was having problems in this game now obviously we all know how bad I am in the rain right now on, uh, on FIFA 14 I'm trying to improve and I'm getting better but it's still difficult but I'm ha one thing look at this the static way all my players have just stood there there's no movement whatsoever and uh, I was talking to, uh, to MZH actually briefly on, uh, on Twitter the other day about it as well and he's was pointing out the same kind of thing as Mata goes very very close there by the way extremely good uh, move Finn ends up if he's taking that on his left I think he might have been able to find the bottom corner but he just powers it past that far post really disappointing I wanted to get back on level terms here but like I was saying um, movement when it comes to attacking is really really poor it, regardless I've changed the uh, I changed the, the actual uh, in-game custom tactics to uh, to free form and chance creation is really high but there's just no movement amongst the players. Now, I don't know whether it's because of individual work rates of the uh, the specific players I have in this squad or whether it's just a generic issue with uh, with attacking AI as a whole in FIFA 14 on next gen right now. But I'm just not getting any movement from my attacking players. I'm trying to counter-attack and I'm getting 
strikers just stood there not moving, not making runs. Even when I hit LB, they'll just make the tiniest run and then stop again. And uh, my attacking midfielders, you've got three of the best attacking midfielders in the world right now, Eden, Hazard, Wan Mata and, uh, and Oscar. And they're just not moving for me. They just stood there not making any runs. And if they do make a run, it's towards uh, an opposition defender. So they're not running into space. They're running to get marked, if that makes sense. And it's incredibly frustrating when trying to build a move. I'm having so much possession in these games, but I just cannot create the chances to win games because the players aren't moving for me. I'm like the uh, the goal against West Ham, that first goal where we're passing the ball about. That's what I'm doing in games, but that issue against or well, that specific goal against West Ham was the one off where it actually worked. I was able to get the jink around the defender and put the ball into the back of the net. Ordinarily in most games at the minute the the opposition is just putting so many men behind the ball. I'm trying to pass around like that, but people aren't moving for me and I can't find anyone. I end up just passing the ball about and running into a dead end and then getting caught on the counter attack and conceding goals and uh, it's it's something that I'm struggling with right now and it's something I'm going to have to really focus on heading forward into the rest of this season because we picked up a defeat there against Newcastle we're coming into this game away at, Sa at the San Siro and we're going to concede a sloppy goal that one ball over the top took out both of my centre backs they were both sat a lot higher than my two wing backs so uh, Mar Mario Balotelli was played onside there by the two wing backs I was actually playing Danilo and De Silio actually um, in this one because of rotation purposes because this game wasn't too long after uh, after the Newcastle game and uh, they just weren't on the same wavelength as the rest of the defence they played Baratelli onside he got a fortunate deflection as the ball just rebounded back off Czech shins there as you can see and then it's just a cheeky Mario uh, or Tiki like Mario to uh, to lob that effort we can't get there to uh, to keep it from going in and then we go 1-0 down early doors and this is this Champions League group is so unbelievably tight right now <coughs> that's what she said but uh we're sat top of the group, level on points with AC Milan on uh, on seven. Then you've got Zenit St. Petersburg sat just behind us on six and Olympiacos on three. So there's only four points between the top and the bottom of the group. So any of these teams can go through as we head into the last two games. You can see we're picking up a free kick there. Andre Scherler gets taken up from behind by uh, Christian Zapato. It's a poor tackle. Got the shot away, but uh, he's just come through the back of him, knocked his uh, standing foot there, and it is a free kick. So we're going to try something that's a little bit too close to, uh, to try and take on a, a, a straight shot at goal because we don't really have a free kick specialist in the team right now. Obviously, one matter is decent, but uh, they close me down really, really quickly there. Willian's going to have a shot here. Goes just wide. You'll see from the replay, it was actually heading in until the uh, the movement on the ball just makes it sway to the left-hand side. You see, as he hits it, that's going in the bottom corner, and then just as it gets about five or six yards out, it sways to the left, swerves to the left, and really disappointed not to uh, to pick up an equaliser there. But we're into the late on in the second half now. Again, I was having trouble just creating passes. A lot of a lot of the a lot of the games right now is just possession football. Neither team is having a chance. It's me just keeping possession of the ball for ages, and then just trying to stop them counter attacking, and then repeating the process. But so we come close there. Akin Fayev making a great save down low to his left hand side to keep us at bay, and then we're going to have another chance here into the 90th minute. We're trying to get ourselves back on level terms because a point would almost definitely make sure or see us through to the next round of the Champions League because of course we've got Olympiacos at home in the next game but Silio's going to play in Willian and this is going to be another example of me just trying to, to create something but players just stood there watching me with the ball not making any sort of runs whatsoever you see the players to my left and right hand side other than Danilo and I tried to play that ball to Danilo and it played it to Juan Mate like it decided to play the ball to the offside player just because he was the furthest forward which again in itself is incredibly frustrating hashtag angry chairs but we are in disappointing form right now as you can see we still sat second in the group with one game left against Olympiacos so so long as we can better Zenit St. Peter but Zenit St. Petersburg's result against AC Milan in the last game we will go through to the knockout stage of the Champions League so fingers crossed we can do that I'm not entirely too sure when that game is maybe before Christmas it may be after Christmas uh, I will have to uh, we'll have to wait and see but as you can see in the Premier League everyone's on 12 games now apart from a couple Man City and uh, Cardiff that may be the game that they have in hand but uh, we're one point behind Arsenal in sixth and four points off the European spot so we've still got it all to do in the Premier League and I really am putting everything into every single game that I play but the I'm just it's just gonna be a case of fiddling with the custom tactics I think finding something that works properly 
and uh, hoping that we can keep hold of the job, I guess, until we find a vein of form and a, uh, a formation or a situation with uh, with the tactics that means that uh, we actually start scoring more goals than we're conceding. We're actually not conceding that many goals at all. If you look at the, the Premier League table, we've only conceded like four goals all season, but we've only scored, on average, a goal a game, which just isn't good enough. So that's where we need to improve. It's goals scored, and that's exactly what I'm going to try and do from here on out. We're obviously getting closer and closer to that January transfer window. Fitness is becoming a bit of an issue, but I'm trying to keep on top of it with a little bit of rotation. We'll have to wait and see how that goes later on in the week. But that is going to bring this one to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to leave the, leave the video a like if you could be so kind. That would be absolutely superb. Of course, if you aren't subscribed already, then do feel free to hit the subscribe button. There will be a link on screen as well as an annotation over that little red button and a link in the description to do so. And if you missed yesterday's video, the previous episode, there will be an annotation on screen over the, uh, the little snippet of gameplay to take you to that video as well. But that's got all from me for today, guys. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.